Hello world, this is Zan playing Late Age Caleb in Lucid's 2022 Dominions 5 tournament. This is turn 52. So, just trying to transition to maybe shorter, quicker episodes. We'll see how that works. We start here with completing our Alteration 8. Next step is Alteration 9. Army of Gold is going to make my armies a lot more resistant and capable of actually fighting back against superior troops and sacreds. In a more short-term case, if I end up fighting Abyssia, for example, with the research that I'm assuming they have and not having had their capital for some time, I'm assuming they only have, you know, Morning Stars and Axes and Fire Magic that they can bring to bear against me. And Army of Gold just kind of ignores all of that. So, yeah, Alteration 9, definitely a good <laughs> research to hit. Anyways, we found an Alchemist Guild in Tepanet which is really good for me right now because alchemists, and I'll just pull that up, alchemists are fire one, earth one, astral one, where I really, really, really care about that earth one, astral one. The debate is nobody knows why the hell they're 300 gold. That's It's wild. I don't think this is worth them costing that much. Um, this is just completely insane to me. That they cost so damn much. But I really desperately need Astral and Earth Magic. Uh, ideally together. <laughs> so it, it's something I'm thinking about. Uh, the other side effect it has is where Tapanet is, it's between two citadels, so there's no resources here. So on top of each one costing 300 gold, I have to build a fort there. I think it comes with the lab. Nope, I have to build a, a fort and a lab and then spend 300 gold each. It's a tall order. <laughs> it's a very tall order. And and once more to claim, this Indy site also is not in my original territory. This is Ukart land. So my land, my original land, still have no Indy mages. <laughs> Anyways, our Blood Hunters bring another 32 Blood Slaves, which is amazing. And we are attacked by a Float Cat Horror. Kills the Scout. Uh, so I guess I lose a Blood Hunter here, right? Uh, when you empower in blood, you have a chance of getting horror marked. Yeah. You have a chance of getting horror marked, and right now Astral Corruption is still up. Utgard's doing his best to keep that, keep his uh, his caster away from me. I don't have... I, I think I straight up don't have a caster to dispel it, so we just have to deal with it for now. There's no research, or no rituals or crafting going on, because I'm just stockpiling until this thing goes away. We have another battle in Pentecrator's Bounty. I send four death two mages to just scully spam. Unfortunately, he does patrol with a lot. He's got both thugs, his Yoden werewolf, and his famous lumber construct. Uh, so they're both there. He's got a lot of garm herdings. He's got some watchers, which are very dangerous. So he's got free up, keep the profit. Yeah. So I, I, four scully spammers aren't really going to do much. It's very unfortunate. So I'm going to lose everything. And kill one Garm Herding, which I guess at this point, uh, he will never get them back. It's still not a good trade, though. Don't do that. <laughs> we have battle in Neothia, where uh, our scouts have a fight. And then we storm Ukard with the full might of Kalem again. Let's see, I have mages in the back to cast things like Wailing Winds, Thunderstrikes. I'm a fan of doing turn one Thunderstrike. Uh, unfortunately, I think it hit just these guys on the walls. I don't think any of them actually landed back here. But like a Thunderstrike right here in the middle, that would be a Chef's Kiss. Okay, and I drop some of my army right here immediately. I think I'm casting Mass Protection, right? Yeah, it looks like I'm casting Mass Protection. I drop an immediate group of units down here just to kind of alpha strike them before their buffs come up. Maybe I can hit some mages, but this is a pretty dense circle of infantry. This right here, this like swarm of bugs, is Ravenous Swarm. This is my ticket to kill any undead in case he teleported back his white mage suddenly to do stuff. I wanted to make sure that that thing would die. And then we cast Wailing Winds, but I don't think it's going to do too much. These girls, while they're in their home province with Dominion, they're going to have a lot of morale. And he doesn't have that big of an army anyways, so... Everyone else over here is to receive more buffs or hold them tech. I feel like this guy got Strength of Giants, so now he hits pretty hard. 
I don't think I had enough mages to do weapons of sharpness. Or at least not too much of it. Which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. So now the rest of them drop. Uh, it's very important. Storm got cast very, very late for a reason. Because these guys, these area infantry with the swords, uh, the area flyers with these white wings don't actually have storm flying. So it's a double-edged thing where I wanted them to fly to the enemy side of the battlefield, and then I wanted to cast Storm to keep them there <laughs> in case he was casting Wailing Winds or something. They wouldn't be able to fly off. This is actually something I learned to while fighting Atlantis. Uh, I know I wasn't able to show the fights here on screen, but a lot of them came down to my troops just riding before he did, and using these area troops was going to be a solution for that. And I think that's why, if you notice, I have some area infantry, but they still had spears. So it's just kind of my progression of learning how to play a late-age Kalem. I added these area light infantry so I wouldn't rout during a storm. But then they, they, they still have spears, so then Utgard casts Skeletal Wadi. So I transitioned to having uh, these area light infantry, which now do the same thing with a storm, but they don't. Uh, but they don't have spears, they have swords, which is useful. Why is this morale so low? Jesus. Mm, and then you see here, now I've added air elementals as well. I have life after death. So as my infantry die, they have to get killed again, which is very good against things like Garm Herdings, I'm trying to click one, that have just this one high damaging attack. So each of my infantry has to get hit at least twice to get killed. Looks like we landed a good vein fire at some point here in the middle. Oh, an air elemental snuck his way in. That's going to be very good. Especially if he gets uh, around the Garm Herdings. So yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. Much, much better. Ooh, that was a good thunder strike. That was that one, too. Jesus. The Blade Storms, uh, I'm not a, not a big fan of. But hey, we were able to storm Utgard, we lost 50 troops in total uh, this time. <laughs> and honestly, I think I even had, I mean, it's a lot of Harab Elder commitment, but I had less of a major force here than I even had for the first one. A lot less Storm Guard, uh, the Raven Guard and such. So we completely wipe out everything inside, taking again not too many losses, so pretty good. Utgard's mine now. Mm, one more assassination attempt where, you know, the local brigands don't want my rule, but my scout kicks their butt. And in the meantime, we are on the storm, uh, on Stone Heavens. And we now watch uh, the final battle at Ulm. Last thing for here for the turn, we have a, a large Atlantean army where he's got a bunch of mages here in the back. He's got some crossbows up front, and some of his Ice Guard in the front too. Ice Guard are really damn good units. If you don't need the big heavy hit, they have absurd defense for a non-sacred infantry on top of, you know, their absurd protection. So they're really damn good. Uh, on Ulm's side, we have probably too many wolves, a lot of thralls, uh, some vampires, crossbowmen, Zweihanders all over, a crap ton of these uh, S1 mages, a, a spattering of demons, more vampires, some ghouls. Oh, and his, his, his pretender's back. Well, that's really good. And he's got a whole new set of gear. Let's see if he adds his ice protection this time. So, first volley. Does some damage. We have natural rain coming in from uh, Atlantis, which means the Jin Stygian rains or whatever happened. Yep, so now everything on the battlefield has invulnerable 15, which kind of negates the use of these crossbows. But does nothing against um, these wolves. Like, the Ice Guard are still going to kill all the wolves. Oh, they've been hit by Curse of Stones. That's really good. A Wailing Winds is cast. That's good. What's going on over here? That's really bad. He's going to kill everybody on his team. Yeah, he can't route. He's a communion master, so he can route. Yeah, that that's really bad. That soul store or er, soul vortex. That's really bad. 
There's a lot of horrors. Oh, this is a... This is a Hellbind... Or a Hellpower Communion. <laughs> well, that's great! That's a Hellpower Communion. The one thing with a Hellpower Communion you need to be aware of... The horrors gravitate toward your horror marked units, and you casting hell power is going to horror mark Ario units. So it would be probably a good idea to cast spells on the other side of the field to apply horror marks. Like I think Astral Gazer does it, or just horror mark itself. There's one that applies AOE horror marks. That's probably the one you want to do to maybe get some of these horrors on the other side of the field. Because right now it's not going to be good. On top of the fact that it's, it's kind of weird that he packed his mages so close together with Soul Vortex. Oh, the Soulless guy got killed. And he's got his death... <laughs> he's got a Firebrand. Jeez. That's pretty cool. Frozen Heart. Uh, let's see, the Super Combatant is on the other side of the field. And he looks quite chilly, so it looks like he once more did forget to bring Cold Resistance. So, while he might have done really good against this with his current stats, it, without Cold Resistance, he's pretty much dead. This is all of these, it's, it's a lot of these like Water 1 mages, and they're all just going to cast Frozen Heart on him. Yeah, and they're... yeah. That's unfortunate, again, that he forgot to do Cold Resistance. Uh, because there's a possibility this, since he is storming, he since since this is uh, Atlantis storming the Ulmish Fort, that Pretender will not repeat retreat under any circumstance. Maybe the turn timer, I'm not certain. So there is a world where he could just outlast this army and have wiped out the entirety of it. But he definitely needed cold resistance to do that, and maybe a better piece of chest armor. The horrors might have done work on him though. That's a lot of horrors. That's a lot of horrors. These Gortide are really, really good. Uh, Atlanteans lose, or ignore, I guess, half of their protection, which is uh, this body ethereal. But they're otherwise really damn good. Oh, it's an armor negating attack. Damn. So that's really unfortunate about the magic weapons on these busted ass infantry. But yeah, so that looked pretty bloody. Well, how did it end up going? So the Adept of the Golden Order died. I think the Snow Captain became this. I think it's okay, so the Adept, I think, died permanently. Some crossbows died, but who, nobody really cares. They're about useless at this point in the game anyways. A few Ice Guard, and nothing really of note. So Atlantis really didn't lose much, but Ulm lost everything. Yikes. Yeah, I think there's definitely a world where given this army and whatever research and resources he had, I think Ulm could have potentially beaten this army. This army here is some is like very good army to thug against, by the way. The damage profile of it is very elemental based, especially with all these Tungaliks. So there is definitely a world where the Son of the Sea with the buffs that he had and all that whatnot could have actually just soloed this entire Atlantean army. But he definitely 120% needed cold resistance and probably a little bit better gear. Let's go look at his gear again one more time. Just to do a final review. Yes, that 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 copper plate definitely needed to be something different. Uh, an armor of knights, a black steel plate, just any, uh, anything but this. Just to give him a little bit more protection. The Horn of Valor is probably because, with his absurd leadership, he's probably leading all of these troops. The Lucky Coin and the Axe of Sharpness, those are fine. I mean, that's what you have on hand. Girdle of Might and Boots of the Messenger, really good. We've solved his fatigue problems. <laughs> it's exacerbated by this chest wound. But yeah, I, I think if this guy had a proper chest piece and cold resistance, he could probably solo this Atlantean army, 100%, with these paths. I mean, he doesn't have Moss Body, which would be fantastic, but he does Soul Vortex at this point. And between Soul Vortex, Temper Flesh, maybe an Air Shield to uh, defend against the crossbows, I think he could have done it. So, 
Yeah, I hope. It's a very good Titan, and I think this player is going to be learning more and more how to use him. And in the future, I think they'll be able to look at a situation like this and just throw the Titan at it with a proper script and kit and wipe out an army like this one from Atlantis. And I think with that, we're going to be done on turn 53. So Atlantis finished off Ulm almost in the time I finished off Utgard. Utgard still has some stragglers left I have to deal with, a large army in Pantocrator's Bounty, and I really want to focus on taking the Stone Heavens first, because although Astral Corruption is based in Pantocrator's Bounty, Stone Heaven gets me Sorceresses. And I really want these. This is a lot of Astral Magic. I desperately need this. And it's also a lot of air gems per turn. Uh, the growth, I mean, I'm at growth too this whole game, so it's, it's it helps too. But I mean, it's turn 50 something, you know, whatever. Uh, I, I just think I really, really, really need the sorceresses. I have so many astral gems and so many uh, astral pearls, and I'm just getting so many per turn that I have no way of using them. Things like golems could help me. Just mine hunts, maybe even. Will of the Fates would be fantastic, especially against Skarm Hardings. It would be game-changing. But yeah, so that's my current plan now that I've taken Utgard, is just spread out, clean up these Utgard provinces, and focus on taking both of these. I'll keep blood hunting and doing what I can, and recruiting more Harab Elders. You see I have area infantry just being spammed out <laughs> as fast as I can get them. Because I don't want to get Skeletal Legion again. Especially if my next war ends up being Atlantis. If Atlantis saw the fight at Utgard, Atlantis himself could cast Skeletal Legion. And even with Weapons of Sharpness, I don't think there's anything my units... Like a unit like this, I don't think there's anything this guy could do, even with Strength of Giants and Weapons of Sharpness, to kill an Ice Guard. <laughs> an Ice Guard that has... Uh, his own, uh, he can have mass protection. So mass protection plus this, plus cold three, and skeletal legion, I don't think there's anything I'll be able to do to kill one of them. So my feature armies really, really, really need to be using these guys for that sword. It would have been cool if these iceclad that are cap only, if they had the sword too. That would be a neat, that's a, that's a change I would 100% make on Kalem right now, and I think they'll still be balanced. And yeah, so we'll end the turn here. Uh, throat scratchy again, but hey, we've got another week of uploads, so I'll see you guys next time.